Uh, good evening, everybody. This is all beautiful that used to be in here. Uh, after I published the paper, I mean, I mean this book, uh, Tom Coughlin called me up, uh, sent me the email, said he wanted to give a talk. I said, well, you don't have to talk. You can read it, all right? So actually, it's everything what I'm going to say is in there. So not much for me to talk about, actually. But just for everybody taste, I will give some highlight of what the, talk, the, the book is about. But so I suggest to him, at that time, I get some more people coming in to, to participate, and maybe people have a different opinion and you know uh, have a different kind of perspective. So he invites uh, quite a few people, right? And give me a 20 minutes talk, and so, which is OK, because I can highlight well what, what is about the book. Uh, this book, next slide, please. You know what, I'm, this book is in the Computer History Museum. I'll tell you why you get in there. Uh, actually, this book was not written by me, though, by your master son, right? I started, but I never have finished it. When I uh, retired in the 2000, they need me to call, up, you know, call me up and say, Tuchen, I want you to write a whole history of how the symphony media come out. <coughs> but I, <coughs> I tried it, and I write to 90 pages, and I couldn't progress anymore. I got a pile, library of all the information, the published and published in my, in my home. <coughs> And so by that 2006, and Chris, Chris come in, called me, Chris a good friend, so he said, Tuchen, I don't know where did you get the information, you want to interview me. He said, you cannot write, I interview you, and put a transcript on it. And that's what ended up the, in the transcript. But after that, I said, well, okay, I have done everything, so my life is over, and I, my memory keeps fading away, so I didn't want to <laughs> keep it. And I throw away all the book, actually, so I, my wife actually complained, I, my, my uh, home, I took the whole place out, <coughs> all the di all, all data, data, you know. So I threw it away. Then about two years ago, Tom told me, he said, hey, Tuchen, we should write a book, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it's kind of interesting. We have combined between Tom and me, actually we over up very much. He used to be a student, I support him, and we work together. And he worked with Comac 28 years, and I worked with 20, I mean, uh, Comac Street 28 years. And I start from Xerox for this drive, before this, I don't come, just this right to the time I retire, 27. So come back, boss, together, 55 years. You know, the whole story over up. So I said, well, maybe we should do that. And uh, I told him about what I want to write. Now, so he actually spent all the time, take my dictation, my draft, and uh, he have some idea. We sit down and talk about it. And I said, let's co it. But he was so polite, he don't want to put his name, he put me as a sucker, he put me in a name there. So I'm responsible for the book, all right? Uh, now, this book, after finishing it, is not good because we don't know how good it is, so I give it to Chris and say, help me to edit it. After he read it, he said, Tu Chen, this book is very interesting. There's a full, full story in the book about this drive. I even didn't think about it. The time when I wrote it, I, I never think about putting it to the Computer History Museum. I just said, well, put in the, uh, uh, in a Google ebook, all right? So if people are interested in it, I can look at it. Now the reason I put this book is to, to for one thing, when Tom and me think about this. Many people hype up with Google, Facebook, all that stuff, every so visible, right? But they forgot behind this, there's one important factor. A very inexpensive cheap drive there. And where does that come from? It comes from a very expensive disc. And many people like you and me work so hard for a lifetime for it. And nobody know actually, really. So Tom and me sit down together, we got to tell, tell the world and what, what really, bunch of hardworking guy behind it. Our stock is not worth that much. Comic stock never gets to that much anyway, right? But this, uh, what is it, Google, a tweet, a tweet just went up to the public and next time worth something like 40 billion or something, Twitter. crazy number, right? Twitter? Yeah, tweet, yeah. yeah. No, even make profit, right? The time when I want to go to make public and IPO, and I couldn't do it without the profit. So Tom and me I talk about, say, hey, we should, for all the people who work hard in this area, we should put this book out. And many people, particularly directly contribute to the coma, we should say it. There's money involved, many people lose money on it, and so we put a book in there. That's the reason we write this book. And we use a comic story in it to get started to say the history of what this uh, century media is about, right? And meantime, man, because of that, Chris saw that he's best man, he saw right away, he said, whole point. It, where the park, you know, story is, and head, and, and media, and 
very well. Huh? He can make a good comment about. It. So he said two chain put this in the computer history museum, and by, so finally I, uh, they they accepted, and uh, Doc helped to edit it. Uh. So that's the book is about. Okay, next slide, please. I'm not going to talk about detail of the book, but I <coughs> start from the kind of guy, you know, kind of run down the highlight for how why I get to this point. <coughs> when I was, you know, young, like you, many guy here, you know, 20, 20s or 30 years old guy, graduated from college and went to work in the 60, right? First thing I noticed is I work on the Mangdik for my thesis. So I went to work in IBM, and at IBM I was in work in Mangdik, but I went to Northrop. At that time, Northrop was looking for some storage, huge air storage. And I didn't know too much about this drive. I heard about it. I know the tape, but I don't know too much about this drive. But one thing very important, in the 60, 68, when I started to do the research, I <coughs> found out that there's quite hot issue, it's a pomeroy. That's why Northrop hired me for, for, for doing the pomeroy for memory. Pretty wire, pretty tape. And there's another thing is a, a bubble memory, you know, uh, and uh, mount optics. And so I started with the printed, wire, printed uh, film, a printed tape, and uh, I was enjoyed that. So, but you see, but when Xerox bought the SDS, because Xerox have an idea of huge office of the future. You know, Xerox, uh, the, the CEO of the Xerox best smart, this is a Macro, Macro, he is a guy who really bring the Xerox, the growth of Xerox. He said that 10 years from then, you know, the 70, there's going to be office of future, it's going to be the paper desk office. No more publish, no more printing. So Xerox was never able to grow. So they want to go to the electronic, and they try to buy many company, you know, buy Bodo, buy HP, you know, HP the, the Honeywell, Nid wasn't successful. So finally they bought the SDS. So once they set up the SDS, they decide to put a research center away from, from uh, Rochester. So she said that it's in the co park, Palo Alto research in the Xerox Park in next to San Jose University. And I was a young guy and they, you know they, the guy deep across the street from me, he was work for he's a big his manager of the SDS they asked me, say, Okay, you don't you don't want to join me, you come to go to join Coma and made a park. So I went I went uh, I fly up here and interview. And that's very really impressed me, all right? Xerox was talking about future, office of future. And that's very really impressed me. He said, 10 years from now, there's no more paper, and I want you to come to help us with, come up with some new idea of put a storage, cheap storage, inexpensive storage. At that time, they offered me to do the Pomeroy. Well, by the time, in the early 71, I come to Xerox Park, and I find out they decided not to do the Pomeroy anymore. So I said, I lost a job. Well, I should have a job, so I have to look for it. But their target is very clear. They want to make a ten thousand dollar, you know, million dollar computer and become a ten thousand dollar, so everyone have one. Right? You you read that this is humbling the future, the book, all right? They talk about that. And one of the target, one of the our task is memory guy. They have to create a memory which is proportionally drop to you know one hundred times. So we have to have a memory of the this and two thousand dollar for uh, 300 megabyte, all right? And now, now why is it 300 megabyte? Xerox is a, is a graphic company, so they need a lot of memory, right? And that's what the target is. So we, we had started, so after that, I decided to look for a new thing. And I first thing I started the MO, MMBI, and the bubble is too too much for me because IBM has got such a big investment, Intel has got investment. And, you know, I, we only got a 200 people in the whole laboratory, only got a two, three guys work on a project cannot do the bubble, so I didn't do it. There's a, there's a group, small group work on the bubble. So I do on the MO, another group on the right one's memory. So after that, I do the MO, the MMBI, and you know, I publish some paper, and I think that in 1974, I shut down the MO because I told people in the IEEE, I was material science, right? Mm -hmm. So I said they are screwed up, because MMBI is, kind of in, is instable because of waste transport, waste decomposition. So everybody just gave up, right? And it was in the Toronto. But after that, eh, that was 74. But actually before that, Xerox in the 73, they finally they decided they want to go. Go for uh, a, a new new thing called a LCDM, low cost disk memory, right? This uh, low cost disk memory, LCDM. 
And their, their idea was we have Winchester Drive design, similar to 33, 40. And their goal, they use a 12 inch diameter with 100, disc per di 100 megabyte per disc and three disc. And, and then they are using a pretty cold film. And that requires a combo pretty medium because Xerox already have, SDS already have 24 inch hipper truck in production, run, ship it out. Without overcoating, of course, right? In the head and uh, a gang of the head, you have to keep moving, step on and moving. And, and that's what they use. And actually, that's an SDS computer. So they have the facility. I, I never saw the drive. I saw the big 24 inch disc, you know. So Gordon told me, he said, hey, can you help? I said, all right, I'll help you. But I don't know anything about drive. And he gave me a lesson. It's really good. I, I learned every monthly recording from him. Okay? And that's how we can start. So Gordon Hughes is a really the guy who <coughs> teach me the, the whole decoding stuff. Okay, next slide. Oh, okay. So then I went ahead to look for what the hell the pretty media is about. All right? So I searched a book and searched the thing. And I'm thinking, of course, in 1966, have this uh, video drive. You ever know about it? Which I actually contributed a lot. We got to acknowledge that. He's the guy who really published a good paper. I use a lot of his. Uh, 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 work to, to learn about it. He worked for NCR and do the head, you know, the drum, and, but he published so many papers about this uh, coal phosphorus. IBM, they have Judge Morrison spirit, they was able to improve the coefficient beyond the 800 OC by no with the nickel. And of course, I told you about HDS. So with that in, there, in mind, I drew the disk, I set up the question, hired a postdoctorate and work with me and come up with the formula, we can make a disk and the formula for making the disc. And so by 1975, only two years later on, Gordon Hill's team is fantastic. They put together a 30 drive. Each drive costs about $2,000. And they demonstrate that in, internally in the computer, in the computer, in the uh, printer. Now, they don't have a printer, right? And use a buffer for printer. And it was uh, very successful. In certain with the double 30, all right? And they, we are hoping to, waiting that to ship it, but. Xerox, eventually they buy the company called uh, uh, Diablo. They make a memory and they bought also the century data. But the century data and the people is all, use oxide, so they decided to keep waiting for IBM 3370 to come out. But when 3370 come out, they use the oxide with the synthetic head. They say, see, the synthetic media, nobody wants corrosion, all right? So why, why you have this for? So they decide not to use it. Or well, here I am again, those are job, right? But by the meantime, before the corrosion, eh, Actually, we noticed the corrosion way back in the, the 76. The, we are worried about corrosion compared with the oxide. It's just not as good. So the manager said, hey, why don't you uh, uh, free out something? I said, well, why don't we go to Sparta? You give me some money. I convert my MO machine to put the sputtering on it. And I can overcoat with the carbon. At that time, the vicious carbon, actually. Uh, 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 or the silica, or M actually mono, you know, silicon monoxide, which is evaporated, I use for MO. I think that it worked for me at that time, the same machine, all right? Mm -hmm. And so I compared that to the sputtering machine and made a lot of, you know, work. And originally I saw I use a cobalt platinum, but then platinum is too expensive. I saw some publication, something like 30, 40% platinum is too expensive. <coughs> so I want to prove the point that you don't need that much. I, I use a cheaper material called aluminum. Could Aluminum can keep the hexagonal cross packs way longer, right? Much, you know, can go way higher without converting to face center cubic. And so I used the cobalt reading. I was able to get 800, 900 oxygen out of it, all right? And that's when I started that. And that's what the, uh, and oh, another thing I really want to go is uh, Spartan, eh? because I was struggling with a uh, with, uh, pretty media trying to get up high cohesivity. And it's very inconsistent in and out already, you know, not, com not deproducible. <laughs> and I'll tell you why that's not good eh? because there's a particle interchange in, induction, exchange induction I discovered in the 75. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. No, yeah, this one. This is the key. This is the whole key. Actually, this is the base for the conduct uh, success, right? And the people didn't know about it, but it is very important. I, when I start conduct, I have this in mind. That's why I was very confident I can do it. What, what happened is when, when I was doing the pretty media for, for Gordon Hughes, and Gordon Hughes already coming to me, back knock on my door, said, Two Chen, you got to make a more square for him, all right? High cohesivity. But every time I try to make a square for him, a cohesivity drop. And when I make a square for him, he complained, he got no, not got enough resolution. And I said, What the hell is that? 
So one day I sit down and say, how can we square? This is that number oriented particle can be, cannot be square. So I went ahead to cut it up, and that's where I asked Tom and pay, pay money to him to help me to cut it up, do TEM work, all right? And I went to some, uh, you know, Lorenz image study. I find out it's so stupid. There's a, there's a big exchange induction between particle, right? So I do the TEM, and I hundreds of samples. I ask tons of the picture. And such a inter particle interaction is a problem. So I come up with a solution, isolate particle. Next slide, please. OK. When, when after that, when I start using the covalent, this is the covalent, I have to use the covalent to deposit onto the graphite, the carbon coated grass. I can peel off. So when I coat the grass, I can you know, ride a truck. After truck, I go take it out and look at the transition. This transition is very jagged, all right? You know, very jagged. And, and that's what the result is caused in the particle exchange induction. That's why it caused this. All right? And this in the particle induction, make a image. So this is 3,000 TPI, all right? I mean, FCI. You come out to about 10,000, they all crowd you together. That's why this region does. So I, very interesting to me. I said, look, this is no way. I told Gordon, all right? So we got to isolate the particle. So I went ahead. Next slide, please. And this is the data one I published, but just to demonstrate to you. This is a highly I contact together particle. Cohesive is lower, same material, <coughs> but the uh, base square is high, right? Square is high. When I show you some more, and they, they start to open up this square and then and this much this square. And this is uh, the reason. But this one you couldn't see any any ripple. Right? And that's what the isolated particle is about. Okay, and that's what the most important thing I saw, I, I, I discovered. So I when the comic started, I say, ah, that's what I'm going to use. Next slide, please. So anyway, so this particle induction, and we actually, you know, it's, it's nothing new, but I just gave it to you first. Some people quote the wrong days that Jimmy Zhu is the first guy. That's not true, all right? Uh, it was uh, published in 1978, 3M, 3M Intermark Conference, a, a joint Intermark Conference in Cleveland, right? I present that part of the picture, the true experiment data, and Gordon Hughes, they present at the same time, he's a modeling. Uh, simulation, and he come out with the same modeling. I, the way he do the modeling, I help him to set up modeling. I use a hexagonal particle, contact each other, so he can integrate uh, the magnetostatic energy there, right? And have an exchange energy. And throw into his equation. So he come out with a, the pattern of this jiggleness of this, and domain. And that exactly same same picture, Jimitsu has been presented. But unfortunately, he never published until the 83, but way ahead of the Jimitsu, right? In, in the in the applied physics, and <coughs> so after this, we had the second in you know, a presentation I was in the 1979. I took the the picture I just showed earlier with the uh, intermark conference. I got to invite talk to give a physical limit of high density recording, and in the New York I did that, and in the talk then I I say well if you don't do something about it, you know I was didn't say anything. You have to isolate the particle. It's a secret to to Xerox. I cannot say, say it out. I told people the problem, right? I didn't tell them the solution. The only guy who really in the meeting know what I'm talking about is, a, well, no, I don't say the only, only few guy, but Bertram is a really know right away. Right after the meeting, he grabbed me and said, Two Chad, did you ever make a major, major noise? And I didn't want to say anything, right? <laughs> uh, and I, I can, how can I tell him? Yeah, I said, well, Gordon Knight is the guy who make a major, so you can ask him, but Gordon doesn't want to say either, right? So he know very well that is an origin of the noise. But we are a solution to isolated particle, right? So by 1986, when, uh, 87, uh, early 87, I forgot which, which day, Jimmy Zhu called me up, uh, Bolton called me up, and he says, Jimmy Zhu, who is PhD, he says, he come to my office, uh, not this building, another building, to ask me about the modeling. So I gave him all the information. I even told him how to use a hexagonal pattern. I even showed him uh, a, a, a Gordon Hughes paper. Unfortunately, that guy never differ in his publication, Gordon Hughes paper, right? And he, he acknowledged my work, but he really, and that's a fact of the life, but people, I don't know why they do that. Anyway, next one. So, with this in mind, eh, there's opportunity to come up in the 1983, uh, they started in eh, the uh, emergence of the small home factor CJ, you know, find a quarter, everything you know. And originally they started with oxide, so many dry maker, I mean, this maker, <coughs> Isa, Nash, and Charlton started. Ampeg is also a big contributor to put a $40 million set up the factory, 
to make a pretty era disc. And that's make everything interesting, right? Uh, suddenly you got so many drive companies come out. Max Store, Botech, Evotech, Minisquay. But the one thing is, many people are suffering. So one day I was, suddenly I, I met Max Ross, he worked for Jerox Park, uh, SDS. Uh, uh, and then he come to me, he said, Tu Chen, in a meeting, he said, Tu Chen, you should go to start a company. We are dying, we both are dying. I said, why? Because the disc drive is just to qualify. Because the tribal is just couldn't pass. I said, well, there's so many people use a global code and say, well, it won't work. So he told me to come and say, uh, I said, I don't have money. He said, okay, I sent to you. Then he, he, in the Botex, he introduced me the uh, vice president of marketing. He's a founder, co-founder of the Botex, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jim uh, Atkinson. Atkinson told me, he's so excited. I said, hey, I help you raise some money. That's how he raised some money, right? And so, I saw us at that time and he said, hey, this is a good opportunity. If I can focus on the tri solve the tribology issue, we can make a company successful. And that's what's in the book I was talking about, right? And I use all the Sparta media. You see, have Mickey Mouse printed and then overcoat. <laughs> then I was trying to ask me to join him, but then he was printing. I said, no way. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Next one. So I tried to do this very quickly. Then let me go through it. Now I choose, I, I didn't. Sorry. I copied the, the printed media. Exactly. Because everybody is right already tuned up for, for printed media characteristic. So very easy. You just copy exactly the same parameter, right? And and that's isotopy media anyway. So I went ahead with isotopy media. I didn't want to use the Cobalt Chrome on Chrome because it's so new technology. And I tried to use that before, the Chrome in the sputtering, in a poor, inexpensive sputtering machine. It couldn't work. I couldn't, I couldn't repeat that Nadali's work. Even though, even though not only presented in 79, but I was curious, you know, how, how can it work? So I used, a, I selected the Cobalt Platinum based alloy. At that time, I was so lucky that I was a review of the paper of Abozov and Yana Sugawa. Abozov got 20% cobalt platinum, and he can go up to over 1,000 Austin. And then Yana Sugawa used a 10% platinum with a nickel 10%, he can go over 1,200 Austin. I said, that's the one I want to use. So we, you know, I'm a copy killer, you see. I, mean, I, I don't invent anything, I copy people, right? Mm -hmm. And I copy this right away, so I can design this all sputtering machine, very simple. <laughs> and what I do now, I'm experienced with a, RS button, I've been good at RS button because I work for IBM at the time when, when the beginning. So I use an RS button, I can erode the target very, very much 80 to 90 percent. So the platinum can be very inexpensive. And that's why I <laughs> decided to go ahead and easy to make. And you know, the cobalt platinum is Dowdy vacuum system. I can do that in, in the cobalt reading, in the, the oil dehydrogen pump, I can do any place, right? So the first machine we designed is a very inexpensive 800 machine, produced 120 degrees per hour. Uh, in the airbag, and, and very poor vacuum, or not very good. It turned out that's very interesting, did not want to explain to you. But that's how we started. And with this, we, we can quickly go to mass production. But one thing problem was a tri no problem, the one thing our target was to fix the tribal issue. Next slide. And that's, we can focus on it. And as James, you know, Scotchin was insist, that time customer wanted 20,000 CSS for this than five gram low. You now you don't know what's important at that time. Nobody qualified that. A dry maker cannot sell the huh? Just okay, time. Huh? Time. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so I can I can stop. <laughs> yeah, I can stop. Yeah, yeah. I can tell call me stop. But you know, very interesting. The five gram note. This is a key. This is a key. That's what made Comac successful. And we had a guy called Scott Chen. He is a fantastic guy. He he just won't buy it. Don't solve this for he would not sell. So we focus out. And Jim Shear did that. I come up with a you know very accurate CSS tester, and uh, we very luckily you find that this form fumbling have this zero zero. That's a that's that's a research quantity, not a not a production, right? It's a positive. I told him we are, we fail. Actually, so much trouble at that time we could you know that's the April of seventy, what eighty 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 four. April, and we couldn't solve the problem. I even told Tom to go spot the tungsten sulfide and everything. All right, but you know that finally then. We find this and we solve the problem. And we even be hard to buff in, but we know how to do it. Why not we come a spray buff to make it successful, right? And another key back to make it come back successful is we have <coughs> we particle isolation, that's what it, that's why we can extend so many years. And properly text properly texture. Because we now we don't depend on the texture for orientation. We can do any texture for optimize for CSS. And unique spatter overcoat. I just wanna talk because the vacuum is so lousy. 
we already got nitrogen in there all the time, and we use nitrogen control for humidity, and we doped the, we are do, we were doping carbon with the nitrogen, and we didn't know that first, right? But it worked, and then people didn't find that out until what, the 1989 or something like that, right? Okay, next slide. But so Comac is lucky, so make it successful. These are these are particles that really isolated too. Okay, and we go ahead. Next one. We don't need add we low temperature. We this low temperature process. Yeah. Maybe skip this. Yeah. Yeah. So we go we go ahead to all. But by 19 the, the, the good life is not that long. We said by 1997 we are in the desperate because the truck we become so small. The isotropic media is a problem. So we have to switch to oriented media. At that time, Chris just joined us. He was desperate. <laughs> but he was a pretty good manager. He encouraged everybody and I helped to make that into the thing. But I want to call you the oriented media most important contribution. I mean, as I think they discovered by El Atuki there in the, in the early 80s. But one thing that's important is Bob Fisher really discovered the cobalt tandanam, isolated particle. All right? Next slide. It's almost done. And this uh, this is under the cobo, cobo, chrome, cobo, chrome molybdenum, and this texture, you know, without, without a texture like this, the texture like this, the texture around this, the last side. And then, then once you, you uh, spot the cobo film, they are really isolated, beautiful isolation. So, in a certain way, this is a history of the whole, whole uh, industry, bank to this. And our isotope in beer, I'm going to the, what, 19, uh, I thought we were sell to when the entire students sell some too. Yeah, so it's a long history.